pink. Attention all staff. Code pink. Code pink. Attention all staff. Code pink. Code black. Boom. A bomb threat made on the hospital. Wait a minute. Has that actually happened before? Mm, technically, yes. But we've actually never been bombed before, so we're good. Oh, you've just never been bombed before. That's so reassuring. Code silver. Code silver. An active shooter in the hospital. Bah, bah, bah. Has that actually happened here? Thankfully, no, but we have had a few threats made to the hospital in the past. They're threatening you guys here. What are you people doing to them? Code Violet. A combative individual in the hospital. And what's the difference between that and an actual shooter? Well, one of them is insane and carries a gun, and the other one is just insane. Code Brown. Severe weather going towards the hospital. Uh, do you mean like a tornado? <laughs> I'm sorry, did you forget we lived in Southern California? Code white! Code white! Emergency evacuation of the hospital. Where would we go? I mean, we could go to the parking lot. Or to the bar, am I right, ladies? Hold up with me. Hold up, no? No one. But, I mean, we could do that. I mean, ain't no argument. But, um... <clears throat> On a professional note, if a code white were to happen, we have things placed in the hospital. Code blue. When a patient goes into cardiac or respiratory arrest in the hospital. Uh, this may be a little personal, but my, my dad had a, a heart attack. I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you. My, my husband, he died of a heart attack today. I'm so sorry. As tragic as that is, um, I mean, all all nurses are involved at any time and any place at the hospital. So, I mean, it really affects everyone. Code pink. A baby is straight up stolen from our hospital. Hey, Dawson. Oh, hi. Long night? Uh, not too bad. I'm just starving to death. Um, the Ramers came in at 2.25 a.m., dialed it at 2, uh, was in a lot of pain, but refused any medication. Oh, natural. Oh, the fun ones. Yeah. I already told Steven that when we have kids, it's all the drugs for me. Praise be the drugs. <laughs> What's up, Chloe? Are those donuts I see? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. Uh, Campbell's that had the twins in six. New dad brought them in a few minutes ago and dropped them off, you know, right near my workstation. And I can't resist them. <sighs> More? Isn't there still cake in the kitchen from- The, the Williams. Williams. Yes. And bagels. And cheese. I really like to eat cheese at night. Um, you know, with those like charcuterie boards, with a little glass of wine, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a vibe. Um, yeah. You know that's weird, right? I mean, it's true. 
I mean, well, okay, guys, guys, guys. On another note, no pun intended, he left a note. You guys want to read it? Oh, whoa, 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 no, no, no. Let, let me guess first. Let me guess. So the note probably says, "Thank you for all you did for us. Our little ones are so so grateful." Um, heart the Campbells. Well, let's find out. Um, thank you all so much for all you did for us. The little ones are so grateful for you all. Heart the Campbells. You were close. You got the an hour wrong, but it's a superpower. Yeah, that. Or all the parents are starting to think the same thing. Hey, hey, hey. Do not, do not discredit my superpower, you know? Because jealousy is a disease, and I think you need to get well soon. You know what? I want a donut. I'm hungry. I want a donut. Why don't you just have one? Are, are you freaking crazy? Um, I might be a little bit. I might be a little mentally unwell, but oh, what's okay. it gonna do but, to you? But you do know that I'm never gonna fit into my dress if I just keep eating all that junk food they bring us. Like, can't someone bring us a Jamba Juice gift card or like a salad, like a membership to LA Fitness? No, just get bagels and donuts. I love donuts. Those damn parents. How dare they not think of diets? They don't care. It's a thought. Well, it's a goddamn stupid thought. Well, I love it. You know, I'm really jealous of you guys. You know, I'm impressed, Austin. My mom is an excellent seamstress, so she can fix your dress if you need to take it out. She made my wife's dress when Danielle and I got married. How is Miss Danielle, huh? Oh, she's okay. Well, that was obvious. Like, how is she? Is she, what? you know? I, I, I said it. Oh, 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 yeah. Why are you stuttering? You know me. You know Dawson. It's not that hard to just spill it out, you know? It's good to talk. Okay. Okay. We don't see each other anymore, and when we do, it's pretty cold. And I've been sleeping on the couch. That's new. I'm really sorry you guys have to go through that. It's just why I don't think nurses and relationships mix together well. Look, Danielle and I are figuring it out. It's just a rough patch. Marriage is made of patches. Like a cool denim jacket. Such romantic words, huh, Chloe? Success! Hey, 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 ladies and pen! Guess you just did our first beat section! It was Joanne and David Baker. They had a baby girl! Oh my god, that is so amazing. I would give you a hug right now, but circumstances tell me I can give you a really awkward virtual high five. That's so awesome! I remember my first. Lost since then, but you always remember your first. Oh, it was so hectic and crazy, but you know, everything worked out. I did one last week. I'll have it go. Ooh, sorry about that. Um. Okay, like, I know I should be saying this, but hear me out. I honestly don't even know why we need the doctor in the room half the time. Like, this time around, Angie and I made a really, really good team, and I was in charge most of the time, right? So... Um, we need the doctor in the room, because what if things went wrong? Plus the actual cutting yeah, and I putting know, back... I the... know, It's just like... Uh, we do all the heavy lifting anyways, you know? And they make the dads cut the cord anyway. Yeah, and we don't get any of the credit. Uh, well, okay, well... Maybe for you, but today, after this whole thing was over, Mr. Baker came up to me, he was crying his eyes, and he was like, thank you so much for saving my wife and my baby's daughter. It was a mess, but honestly, I was standing there, and I was like, wow, I literally kind of feel like a superhero or something. Well, listen up, superhero. 
why don't you go change the sheets in room 10? <sighs> Dawson, can you go see how our couple in room 7 are doing? I need to make sure Dr. Nola's nearby in case Josie is out of five. Oh, yeah, on it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Copy that. Oh, I wonder what kind of thank you going to get from the baker. Probably some cupcakes and a note that says, thank you for all you did for us. We are forever in your gratitude. Heart, the bakers, and the baby girl. Sounds about right. Oh, you know what? I bet it'll only be addressed to me. Oh, yeah, because you're that good. Ooh. <laughs> no. I don't mind if you answer your phone, you know that, right? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, hey, what's up? Look, I can't talk. I'm already at work. Hey, don't yell at me. He's your kid too, just drop him off. No. Look, I'm, I'm at work. You know the thing you don't do? So I can't be doing this right now. No, no I'm not coming down. Won't you just dropping them off? Look, Danielle, don't do this. Okay, look, I have to go. Oh, God. Um, uh, uh, hey, uh, so sorry about that. Uh, how can I help you? <clears throat> Chloe. Help. Hello? 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 Is this thing working? Is it on? I don't know. <laughs> uh, get it. Um, am I, okay, do I check in here or somewhere else? I, I don't really know. They just sat me on a wild goose chase. Uh, yes, you check in here. This is new for a lot of people. Right. Well, I'm here to see Angelina Barco. She told me she was in labor and getting ready to have my baby. Um, I'm the new mom, adopted mom. I, I don't really know what to call myself yet, but is she here? Uh, Angelina Barco? Well, we can't really give out patient information, so who are you again? Oh, right. I'm so rude. Okay. Um, my name is Monica Hayden, and I'm adopting a little girl that this young lady's having. Her name's Angelina Barcos, and she told me she was getting ready to have her baby and on their way here, so I had to rush straight from work, but now I'm inside, and they're telling me I can't be in here. That's not true, right? Like, what's up with that? Yeah, stupid coronavirus. Kind of messed up everything, you know. Well, do you at least have the adoption papers? Well, about those, um, this is a long story. I mean, where do I start? So Angelina, she's my receptionist. And she's like the super sweet girl. But, you know, she got pregnant and she told me she didn't want to keep it. She was going to, uh, uh. And I mean, I just thought all the time about like my husband that we had been trying for so long, but he said no. I mean, you know, he loved fast food and it just made him huge. But like, who was I to stop him? And sometimes I do feel guilty because oh, everybody was telling me that I've been cooking recipes off the Food Network, but I really can't stand Martha Stewart or the pioneer woman yapping in my ears so not early now. in my day. I'm sorry, that's not the point. It's, it's okay. Um, well, you have to understand that the hospital has new rules. The law states that without written patient consent, we can't give out any info. I didn't ask for her info, okay? I, I know who she is, okay? I, I just I just need to make sure that her and my baby are okay, okay? Uh, look, you're gonna have to go wait in your car. And what we can do is when the patient does get here, uh, we can video in with her consent. Yeah, you know what? You're actually really getting on my nerves here because I don't think you understand the severity, okay? My baby is being born at this hospital and you're telling me I have to wait in my car? Look, a mother know, waiting uh, for her uh, baby I, to be born in her car. That, that sounds ridiculous. I understand it's not the ideal circumstances, but it's the law. What'd you say your name was? Um, Pen. You can kiss my ass. I'm gone. I'm gone. 
That lady was crazy. Um, that's never going to get better, is it? Yeah, I know. I'm the charge nurse here. That means I oversee this ward. I tell all the other nurses in maternity what to do and when to do it. Of course, I answer to the doctors and to Ariel. But I can handle them. They trust me. Which is more than what I can say for when I'm at home. You see, my wife, Danielle, isn't speaking to me. She's mad. She's always mad at me. She says I'm vacant and dismissive when I'm at home, but that's because she doesn't understand what I go through here. Here, in a hospital, it's life and death. That's just what it is. Anything less than that feels, I don't know, unimportant. Don't get me wrong. I love my wife. And I love our son, Jonah. He's 12. He's the light of my life. I give him as much attention as he needs. I help him with his homework. We play video games. I help him practice for sports. But problem is, he acts like he doesn't need me right now. He doesn't talk to me for days. And when he does, all I get is a grunt asking me for money. When he was little, he was always wrapped in my arms. And he would love to hide behind my legs. Now, he's almost as tall as me. And the only thing I see from him is the back of his head when he's walking away with my money. Lately, it feels like Danielle and Jonah have turned against me. I can tell because none of them laugh at my jokes, which is a dead giveaway because I'm hella funny. Right? Yeah, yeah I'm funny. <laughs> they also come and go together like they've made some sort of pact. What is this? Two on one match? Nah. So I've decided to start sleeping on the couch. It's easier with my hours anyway. When I come home, it's late, everyone's asleep, and there's the couch. A nice, quiet place where I can just lie down. This is how it is now. This is my life. Danielle takes over the whole bed and leaves no space for me. Before, she used to wait up for me, ask me how my shift was, and then we'd snuggle together. Now, it's just me, my phone, and the remote. And trust me, none of those snuggle. <laughs> I miss my wife and my son, but being at the hospital is where I feel important. There's always a new mother, always a new baby. It's where I have a purpose. It's where I can make a difference. But today, <laughs> I'm tired. You know what? That's all right. <laughs> oh God. Make it stop. Oh my God. Hey. Oh my hey. God. Oh my God. Josie. <sighs> See? What? Do you need anything? Anything I can do? Nothing. Just shut up. Okay? You're the one that did this to me. Okay? Just shut up. Your voice is just so loud and annoying. So just shut up. That's what I need. I need for you to just shut up. Okay. What are you? Are you? Can you? Can you put that away? I, I'm. I'm literally giving birth, and and you're. You're typing. What are you doing? Oh, this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Oh. Oh, God. That was a bad one. Okay. Hey, you're doing great, by the way. Okay. Easy for you to say. 
okay, I'm sorry. We're uh, we're on a deadline, and I'm the lead on the project. It's kind of sort of frustrating, and I'm kind of busy. I don't really have time for anything else. But hey, I trade places with you if I could. Oh, I mean it's that. It's frustrating. That that's frustrating. Okay, I'm literally giving birth to our child, and and you're frustrated about a deadline. I'm literally going to push a child out of my freaking hoo ha, and 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 you and you and I, and I just. Oh my God, I can't believe you. I can't believe you. I can't. I can't believe. This. Oh, uh, how are you doing, hun? Oh, she just uh. I don't know the bad one. Isn't there anything more we can do? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, of course. We can give her some of the pain. It's it's called Sadel. Uh, we can give it her once or twice if we must. The moms swear by it. You know, I can also have the anesthesiologist come in if she just doesn't want to feel. No, anything. okay, no, 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 okay. No drugs, okay? I'm fine. Hey, okay, you can don't. Do this. Hey, Joe's. You know, you don't. You don't have to tough this one out. You know, you can. If no, really... okay? No, 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 okay? No. We said we wanted a natural childbirth, and, and I'm, I'm fine, okay? I, I'm fine. I, I can do this. I, I can... Oh, God. Right, you're the man. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, I guess we can check to see how far she's, you know, dilated after, um... This one passes. <laughs> I mean, they're getting closer together and worse. We should be getting close, right? Well, that's our hope. Are you really suffering, huh? No. Do you, do you need anything? Anything I can do? Ice chips? I know you really like them. There's some more over there. You want me to go get some? We're past ice chips, okay? Just... No, but I swear, these hospitals have the best freaking ice chips I've ever seen. You know what? I'll go get some right now. I'll come back. One second. <gasps> oh my god, please, please. Just take this baby out. <laughs> oh my god. You're doing great! Have you done this before? Had a baby? Oh, no, not yet. But I can't wait. You know, I've watched all you mothers come in here and give birth like, like warrior queens, and it makes me so happy. And then, and then, and then, you gotta walk out of here with your new baby. There is nothing sweeter than a newborn. It's like hope. Wrapped in, you know, a little blanket. <laughs> You're so, so great. So hopeful, so wonderful. <sighs> yeah, well, I don't feel so hopeful right now. <laughs> what I do feel is I want to punch Eric in the face with his stupid ice chips. You know, on that topic, my, my fiance and I want to have three. Well, I mean, I at least I do. He's only thinking one. I mean, I want two boys and a girl in that exact order. Yeah, well, well, good, good freaking luck to you. <laughs> <sighs> Don't worry, your mood changes from moment to moment. You're not always gonna feel this way. I assure you. You know, and you really don't have to tough this one on yourself. The drugs nowadays don't affect the baby at all and can actually make the experience much more joyful. I'm fine, okay? I made a commitment and and I I I promised myself that I can I'm fine, okay? I just oh god. Oh god. Look at this. Just look at this. How do you guys get these ice cubes in shape? Man, I want to try these at home. Mm. Here. Here, you should have some. Here. Give me a freaking ice cube. All right, uh, can we check now? Oh, sure. Oh. 
Oh, it's more than it was before. But still not really close. You know what? I'm just gonna go call with Dr. Noel and give her an update. Uh, me meanwhile, you two keep up the good work. to hold the meeting an hour earlier shoot i don't have time for the i don't have time for the meeting Here's... god man god sorry sorry it's just i get about 60 emails a day about work you want to guess how many texts i get a hundred. You know most people don't get that many. And when I'm not at work, those numbers probably double. It's just, it's, I'm always busy. I, I, can, I, I can never catch a break or anything like that. It's, I'm always working. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always doing this. I'm just, I'm always busy. Or distracted. Distracted is what Josie would say. And she's right. Yeah, she's right. I, I am distracted. You know, every time she would say that I'm distracted, I would make a point to stop whatever I'm doing and give her a kiss. I mean, it was kind of our thing. So, you know, she could always tell when I'm going to pop and before I do, she reminds me to stop. Stop before I pop. Now I get it. God, I freaking love that girl. I always have. You know, even before she loved me. Now, when we met in college, we had some mutual friends. I was the token nerd. She was the token hippie. But I remember the first time I laid my eyes on her. I immediately told our friend Chris that I was going to marry that girl. And Chris told me that she wasn't my type, but I really didn't care. I mean, Josie was so free, so vast, so funny, very pretty. She was literally the kindest person I've ever met. She she was perfect. So, one day, I asked her to let me take her out on a date. She was like, really, on a date? And I was like, yeah, something like that. It was, it was a date. So, what we did was we went to this restaurant in Calabasas. And in that restaurant, they served something called Dove. Like, who eats Dove? It was weird. And I was trying too hard, so... And she could tell that I was trying too hard, so... Instead of eating there, what we did was... We drove to the In-N-Out. And while we were at the In-N-Out, she introduced me to these animal-style fries. Mmm! And we ate them in the parking lot of the Castaway Restaurant in the hills of Burbank. You know, after that, after that one date, we never spent another night away from each other. Every year on our anniversary, we still did the same thing. Just, I, I love Josie. She makes me feel so romantic and it's, honestly, it's, it's great. And I, I love to spoil her, you know, take her to the mall. 
buy her jewelry, clothes, Wetzel's pretzels. But now I'm really scared. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of the change that, that a kid might bring. And I, I really don't know anything about kids besides what I read. And, you know, it's a, we're having a kid. That's a big responsibility. I don't know if I can take care of that or just, you know, I was an only child when my dad died young. So my mom taught me to hustle. So I work really, really hard. That's why I'm always busy, you know, getting hundreds of emails and hundreds of texts, but it's only because I want to make Josie happy and I want to give her the world. But I remember the last time we did this, we were considering on having a baby and it was, it was really tough. I guess she didn't want one. And But now that we're here, having a baby, it's, I don't know. I don't know. God, listen to me. I sound like a girl. I just don't want things to go wrong. I just don't want to lose my in and out partner. Hello everyone. Hey. Hey. Oh my God, I, I finally get to go home. I'm beyond exhausted. You know what? I just want to curl up on the couch with my dog and watch Netflix until I pass out. Heaven. Oh, you're so lucky, dude. I really hope I don't get asked to work a double because I hear Angie isn't coming in today. Again? Yep, surprise. No, it's... What did I expect, you know? And Ariel, she's on her little war path looking for someone to work. And I got a little date with a guy named Mimosa and his best friend named Margarita. So, you know... I ain't working 12 extra hours today. Don't worry, Chloe. If anyone gets asked to stay, it'll be me. You know, the guests in seven are done yet, but there's still the possibility of preeclampsia. I'm tired. I'm gonna go. Hey, chicos. Chloe, your ship is up. Are you sure? I, I, I really wanted to work more. I, I love the babies. I just... <sighs> Please? Oh, I'm sorry, but there aren't enough patients or scheduled inductions coming in to keep all of you on right now, so... I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, Chloe. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. I am so sad. I am so, so lost. Oh, what? Uh, see you guys. Have fun, Chloe. Chloe. Bye, Chloe. <laughs> You know, sometimes I'm jealous of her direction. And that she can go up to six drinks. Oh, hey, Ariel, that's your guess who's working another 12 hours face. Oh my god, I'm here to tell you, Penn, that you're absolutely right because you're charge nurse today. Um, another 12. What did I say? What? What did you say? <laughs> you didn't say anything. I mean, that's what. That's what happens when you're in charge, you know? More responsibility, more hours, less recognition. And more in trouble with Danielle, who I have to go call. This is going to be fun. Well, um, while you deal with that, um, so we had a cord prolapse this morning, and Seven hasn't even had Statal yet. And how come no one has put down any meso? It's a negatory on the statal. The meso is already on seven. Granola mom turns out to be a pretty tough cookie, but the last time I heard she was only a five. How is she? We need to start making a lateral move on the delivery. Oh, um, 
I'll go in there and check on her. Okay, I'm going to have to request a C-section. Please have the room prepped in five minutes. Unfortunately, it has to be pushed back, but I have another patient in the valley, so it's a little tight right now. But doctor, they wanted to do this naturally. We need no drugs and no type of surgery. I think I know that, sweetie, but they've been my patients for what? Four, five months now? It has to be done, unfortunately. Who wants to come watch me do it? Um, I will. So is anyone willing to watch or do I need to call another volunteer? I will, I will. Anyone else? Anyone at all? I, I would. I, I would actually love if I could be your second in surgery. All right, perfect. Laura, you can shadow Jen. Don't do anything without my permission. Please don't touch anything unless I give you a direct order. I'll see you guys there. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Okay, Laura, before we go, you heard what the doctor said, right? I am her second, which means you are my second, okay? I get to tell you what to do. This was on my residency vision board. Please don't ruin it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good thing Dr. Nola hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, just be glad you don't have to deal with her anymore. Oh my god, I know. She was always so tough with me for no reason. Like, she never gave me a break. She never, I mean, not like you, I mean. She always favored you, Mr. Big Shot Pen. Okay, hold on. Favored me? Are you at the right hospital? Because I don't think we're talking about the same Dr. Nola. I have to fight her on everything. If I don't step in between her and poor Laura, she's going to rip her head off. <laughs> Honestly. Oh my god. Crazy thought. But remember that one time we were... Um, did it bring that baby in the elevator and the husband barked all over you? No, uh, hold on. Don't say it like he didn't barf on you, too. You're right. But majority was on you. <laughs> I know. But, hey, do you miss it? What? Barf? <laughs> no, no way. What? No, of course not. I mean... The scheduling nightmares, the graveyard shifts, and all the drama? Mm, nah, I got enough drama on my hands. Okay. You know, you're different now. What do you mean? I mean, you've changed. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all changed since last year. You know that's not what I mean. Look, you used to be one of the most compassionate and understanding nurses I had ever worked with. You and I were great together here on the floor, but now whenever you're here, it's to give us bad news or more work to do. And this is my job, okay? Like, this is what I'm told to do by the hospital. I don't think of these things to come down here and make your life hard. I have these schedules, deadlines, and bottom lines to meet. They talk about numbers and costs all day long. I don't have time to worry about who needs what in room nine. Okay. I mean, did you know that last week I had to argue with the ER about how maternity is always stealing their gloves? Hey, I know you know how good those gloves are. Well, obviously, I mean, we were the ones that used to steal them. But, I mean, I don't want to spend my whole afternoon having a conversation about gloves. Well, do you miss it? Stealing gloves? No, nursing. Nursing? No, not really. Okay, well, are you happy? Mm, define happy. I don't know, just happy. Do you like this new job? Well, yeah. I mean, of course I do. I mean, I like the hours, the pay, the benefits. No, no, no. I'm not talking about what the job comes with. I mean, do you like the actual job? You know, Penn, I honestly don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like I'm good at it. You know, 
I always knew what to do and where to go working in maternity. I could check in and deliver a baby with much more ease than I could go home and help my son with his homework. Just now I just feel like I'm always lost, you know, like behind an eight ball. And I feel like I'm always supposed to be doing something and whatever I'm doing, I'm not doing it right. You're smart. Of course you're doing it right. Um, hey, uh, you know, I miss you down here. I know. I miss you too. I miss all the girls. <laughs> I miss all the babies. I mean, it's crazy down here. Now I just seem to have this constant stream of bureaucratic bullshit, like just tied along, like following me everywhere, you know? Wow. Is it too late to be a nurse again? Um, not sure, but I couldn't do that. Uh, why not? Couldn't you just tell them you made a mistake and that you want to go back to doing what you excel at? I mean, I could, but I couldn't do that to Brandon. Our lives are so much better now that I'm this. Everything is easier without the scheduling nightmare. <laughs> I mean, look at you. A strong, big man working 24 hours straight to, like today, like working so hard to provide for his family and getting home to see his wife, you know? I can never do that. <laughs> you know that. How how is Danielle? Uh, <laughs> don't ask, please. Why is it that bad? She's fine. She just hates me right now. Why? <laughs> What'd you do, you jerk? Nothing. Um, at least that's what I think. She says I'm married to the job. She thinks I have more time and energy for the patients and the other nurses that when I come home, I'm what she calls vacant and dismissive. Ouch. That's gotta be tough. But she'll come around. She always does. I mean, Danielle is one of the good girls. She loves you. She's a good wife and a great mother. You guys will make up, I mean. Why wouldn't you guys? Uh, you see, that's the thing. She also has Jonah mad at me. When I'm there, I feel like you walking around this floor with all the other nurses not looking at you. Ah! Uh, okay, <laughs> sir, that is not funny. Uh, yeah, it's a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Why don't you just go make sure that room three fills out their insurance forms right away? And you, mister, on the other hand, you still need to complete your ADA evaluations. Well, of course, ma'am. Anything for you. My favorite time of the day is when I get cut from work and drive it to the parking lot. Um, I turn on Dixie Chicks, like real basic, and I pull out of the hospital. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my job. I love the mothers and the babies. I mean, I'm a really good nurse. I ask anyone on my team, my coworkers. I put in a lot of work. There, there, there are about 10 minutes every day that I need to sneak out to sit in my car alone to, to cry because some, some, Sometimes it's all too much, you know? Um, if I can't make it to my car, then I have to go to the bathroom and cry there, but those cries are different because you're trying to keep it all contained and it's just, okay. What I'm trying to say is that this job is truly life or death. And as much as life you see coming into this world, we, Oh, chance of a baby being born dead.
we call that neonatal demise, where a baby's being born alive and then And baby's dying. There's nothing more heart wrenching than sitting with a mom who's holding her baby who just IUFD. Intrauterine fetal demise. Demise being the operative word. Baby dies. This job is like an adrenaline rush, kind of like a drug. Sometimes the drugs are good, sometimes they're bad, and sometimes you get this from the random Chad at a party, and you thought he was cool, but you don't know. And They say mindfulness practice of any kind is beneficial, so they, they recommend exercise, meditation, and crying a lot. I I choose the latter. It's easier. And drinking. Um so I'm off to the bar and then home to drink, then cry, and then pass out while watching The Bachelorette with my cat in my arms. Because who knows what tomorrow brings, right? Oh. oh my god. Ultra uterine infection. What's that? Jen, Laura, I'm glad you two are here because you're going to need to be. Listen, the baby girl is going into duress. I'm going to have to cut it. Wait, wait, what, what, what does that mean? I'm going to have to request an emergency C-section. No, we said natural childbirth. Uh, can't you give her something? No, I can, I can do this. I'm, I'm fine. I mean, I feel the baby starting to come out right now. Josie, I'm sorry to say this, but your body just isn't cooperating. Your water broke 12 hours ago, and to be honest, the fear of infection is starting to creep in. You get infected, you get sick, so does your baby. At some point, I just, I just don't think that risking both of your lives is worth it. Jo Josie, please. Please, come on, we, sh we should do this. Please? I just... Hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere, am I? I do these all the time. I promise you. You will be in very good hands. She's the best we have on staff. Joe's... Joe's, please, come on, let's do this. It doesn't mean you're any less of a warrior. <laughs> you get it? I'm scared. I don't want our baby to come out in a sterile surgical room. I understand. Like, I get it, but I, I want our baby to come out. I mean, you've been in hard labor since yesterday when we were at home. I know, but... Josie, I, I'm, I'm really sorry. I know things didn't really go out as planned, but we, we have to listen to what the doctor says. But if we don't start prepping you for surgery soon, your baby is going to start to lose oxygen. Josie, you're nine days overdue. Your fever, to be honest, it's not looking good. It's spiking and the baby is showing abnormal signs. It's starting to show us flat. Wait, what do you mean by flat? It means the baby isn't showing a lot of movement or changing behavior. We usually have a lot more movement but the infection is actually having a negative effect on Josie. The baby girl just wants to stay inside her mom. Um, yeah, something like that. Oh God. Hey, hey, don't cry. It's okay. Hey, listen, listen, okay, Josie, listen, I'm going to make this decision for us. Okay, Josie, you're not, you're not thinking clearly. I am thinking clearly, okay? We said that we, oh God, oh God, please check, check, no, I think that was a good one. 
<laughs> All right, Josie, we're going to start to begin to prep you for surgery. It will take us a little bit, though. This will be enough time for you to understand that this is the right thing for you. Dr. Nola will be there and we will take care of the very best for you and your baby. Fine. <sighs> Fine, I give up. You win. I can't. I can't fight anymore. Honey, I'm, I'm not fighting you. I'm fighting for your life, for our baby's life. Josie, come on, you have to realize that this is our only option. Jen, give her 25 of Mizo. Laura, let Dr. Raymer know that we're going to need the epidural ASAP. Here, Dad, put these on. We're going to take Josie right now, and we're going to come and get you when you are ready to come in, okay? Wait, what about what about all our, all our stuff? Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, we'll move it to the recovery room. Um, say goodbye, but goodbye. Hey, I love you. I'm scared of you. Hey, you're just, you're distracted. <laughs> hey, listen to me. I love you and I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Love you. All right, I'll see you soon. <sighs> oh, sorry, I just finished Josie's C-section. I played that song on the Bluetooth while I did it. The one playing right now? What, it makes you uncomfortable? Is it weird that a doctor did it? Well, I'm the one doing the procedure, right? So you don't get a say in it. Speaking of C-sections, I love doing them. They're so easy. You could definitely do it if you tried. Maybe not the first time, but definitely the second. Natural birth, it's just a completely different story. There's just way too many things going on. Too many people around you. It's just so hectic. But a C-section, let me tell you, it's simple. It's clean. It's precise. It's perfect. What, you think I'm crazy for saying a C-section is perfect? Well, I did graduate top of my class. I was also valedictorian and I graduated two years early. You know who I was kind of like? I was like, Dougie Hauser. Oh my God, yes, that was name. Not an actual child doing medicine. I assure you of that, don't worry. We're still all professionals, but I was pretty damn close. I'm good at my job. I used to work at the ER, um, just if I say so myself, it was just terrible. It's absolutely disgusting to work with. One time a man crawled in, he did not walk. He crawled in to the ER doors and in his hands were a plastic bag with his feet in it. His left foot was particularly bad, if I say so myself. And he demanded me that I treat him right there at the doors. It was terrible. There was blood gushing out. It was just the smell too. It made national headlines. You might've heard of it, but it was terrible. I was scarred for life. And it's why I switched to babies. <sighs> and the c-sections it's somewhat positive up here maybe positive isn't the right word maybe peaceful somewhat peaceful up here and i get it i'm also not the best with talking to people i'm antisocial. i hear what they say about me but you know if i make people uncomfortable no matter what i do or how hard i try i might as well go all out huh that's why I played the song on the Bluetooth. And it does help me focus. Maybe I'm just wired differently, but 
I just play that song. I get to work. It makes me, it helps me focus. And I, I just get to experience something new every single day. It makes me feel like an artist, really. And you know, at the end of the day, it's me going home to my million dollar house, and my white Range Rover. So I guess it all works out. Okay, not to sound cliche or anything, but I have really strict parents growing up. It was literally to the point where I didn't have any friends as a kid because I was always busy doing things. Like I had after school programs, there was oh, the spelling bee and Olympian math and then the science fairs. And my parents would always tell me like, oh, there's no point in developing a hobby or going into the arts because art schools are for prodigies, Jenny, and you're not one of them. Like, thanks, I guess. I don't know, but they still made me take these classes because it would look good on my college apps or something. I had literally learned to play the piano when I was three years old. What? And then they didn't expect me to take it seriously. Like they didn't want me to get a career in this, right? But how do I say this? Like deep down inside. Ugh. Kill me if I said this. I, despite all of that, I have always wanted to be a musician. Oh, like I wanted to be in a band, okay? And then I wanted to write my own music and I wanted to perform in venues, but like, oh, you know what they say, like only beggars play for money or something like that. One time in high school, I decided to go busking at a subway station with this band, local band. And I skipped an hour of tutor to do this. I have no idea why I thought that was okay. And of course, my parents found out. Oh my God. I had a curfew at 6 p.m. 6 p.m every night for the rest of the school year in high school. We ate dinner at seven. Anyways, and then, and then they sent me to another school, this weird academy or something, so I can get away from the bad influences, which were just my friends. I, I, what I don't understand is that my parents have always wanted me to be a, a doctor or a lawyer as a those are the only two ways of being successful? Like, and what about a teacher? Or, or an actor? Or a waitress? Or, like, you know, even those guys in the street, like, twirling the little open house signs? Like, I'm sure they make, they make money too. Like, am I the only one seeing these people? How come they're only doctors and lawyers? <sighs> I am 25 years old and I am still so scared of my parents even though they live halfway across the country and I can't tell them that for the past like what 20 years the thought of being a musician has never died. It's still here and it's not going away. They obviously have no idea because they never heard me play. They never will. So here I am, a nurse in training to be a doctor. Okay, and the, the thing is like, I'm good. Like, I'm so good at this, right? But am I happy? Oh, 
Okay, um, here are the Raymer's papers. I will get these scanned and uploaded for you by tomorrow. Yeah, by tomorrow morning, you'll be able to see these pen. And what else? What else? Oh, baby has been checked in and color is looking good. Cool, thanks. I guess this means we're all done for the day. Yes, thank you, Pen. Oh, Jen, good job today. Good work out there. Thank you so much. I mean, it, it was such a great experience working with you and I, I, I feel like I learned so much. And I was, um, I was wondering if, um, you know, anytime you needed any help, at your office, or maybe I could just buy you lunch one day and pick your brain. I, I would really love Oh, that. no. No, no. Um, good job today, but I'm not interested in lunch. Oh, okay, no, yeah, that, that, that's fine. I, I get it. I, you must be so busy. I... Okay. Uh, hey, Jenny, before you leave, can you run these down to the billing office? Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. <clears throat> oh, right. Um, Jen, Tuesday next week. Um, my office in Agora. They could use some extra help. Nine a.m. on the dot. Thank you so much. I'll I'll definitely be there. Nine a.m. sharp. All right, bye everyone. Thank you, doctor. <sighs> okay, so this is from the couple with a tachycardia baby a couple days ago. Are they still here? Uh, with the mom. Uh, the baby still are. But why? It's been four days. Why are they still here? I see that Laura was on with them. Um, I... Um... Uh, I was too. The mom wanted a push despite the option for a C, which led to severe tearing and bleeding, which is why recovery is taking longer. All right, you know what? Just next time, make sure to page Clarkson at Valley Center. He can convince them when I'm not available, but it needs to be done. You got it. Okay, hold on one second. I got a call from Dr. Leaf. Hello? All right, how long in between? Okay, I'm heading over there now. One sec. Oh, and also, don't touch anything. Don't do anything. Yes, I'm talking about you, Karen. Who else would I be talking about? Uh, Pen, all rooms clear, right? I need to head over to the valley in a couple minutes. There's a very expensive client who is about to pop, and I just need to be there to hold hands. Um, doctor, when you say expensive, what do you mean? What do you think, Laura? Well, have to pay cash. Okay, you said it, not me. All right, I'm gonna grab a donut, head out for the road. Call me if you need my help, but please, only for emergencies. God, I feel so bad for saying this, but she scares me. <laughs> uh, don't, <laughs> she's terrifying. She's good at delivering babies, but her bedside manner is not the best. True. Uh. Hey, uh, my name's Angelina Barcos. Is this thing working? Uh, yes, it is. How can I help you? Um, yeah, I think I'm having my baby. Okay, well, are you having regular contractions? Uh, I don't know, um, every couple minutes, I guess. Okay, um, when's your due date? Um, I think about a week ago now. Oh, that's a late baby. Well, what's your date of birth? Oh, uh, September 18th, 2003. Okay, let me just... <sighs> this. Hold on. You're 17? I, I'm assuming this is your first pregnancy. Uh, yep. <sighs> okay, well, in that case, uh, where are your parents? Uh, there's a lady downstairs. Uh, she's going to take my baby. <sighs> Uh, okay, but like, you, you don't have a guardian or... I'm emancipated. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, the lady was already here, and we sent her to the parking lot. Uh, and she'll be videoed in with your consent. But 
you need to fill out the forms. Forms? Now? Uh, yes. Do it now? Yeah, now would be good. <sighs> Can we get this over with, please? <sighs> okay. Um, Laura, go and get room three ready for us. We'll send her in, but the forms first. But does she need a parent? Look, I can tell you that this baby does not care if an adult is with her or not. I'll contact the lady and tell her that she's being brought in, but we'll need those forms first. So go ahead and get the room ready. Yeah, I am going to have a baby. People just look at me all the time like why are you pregnant aren't you a little young <laughs> like i don't know like do they actually think i asked for this i graduate high school in three months i still want to do stuff and go to prom <sighs> anyways um it's been kind of a while since I talked to my mom. Like, yeah, two years since I got emancipated. Long story short, um, she got married to this guy, Bob. I begged her not to. He is not a good guy. And she picked him over me. And I thought she loved me. <sighs> he is so gross. Me and my mom together, before she met him, we were perfectly fine. <sighs> then I started working for Monica. And she was super cool. Kind of like that mom I used to have. <laughs> um, she's nice. She's super funny and oh my god she has so much money like literally with the g-wagon and the house oh my gosh it's crazy um eventually i kind of had to tell her that i got pregnant <laughs> originally i thought about just having an abortion and being done with it but <laughs> when i told monica her eyes just kind of lit up she said she could have the baby i guess i thought why not like oh she's got so much money she could buy the baby whatever it wanted and she has the nursery and uh, it just kind of worked i guess i haven't told my mom <laughs> That I got pregnant. Yeah, definitely not going to. She would literally kill me. <laughs> um, it's funny. Uh, my boyfriend Jeremy. He wants us to get together as a family and raise the baby. <gasps> yeah, right. He works at Target. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I love him, but what type of future would we have? He's a loser, <laughs> like Monica says, and <laughs> she's probably right, but <sighs> he's still a really good guy. We've had so much fun together. Like, uh, I don't know, one night we were just watching a movie or something in my room and we just started goofing off, I guess. Kissing and it just happened. And now look at me. I still... I still want to go out there and and travel and and go to college and I don't I don't know 
how I'm supposed to do that with the kid. I'm still a kid. I don't know how to guide it through life. Just look at what I've done with mine. Mess. I think, I think I've gotten really used to having her with me these past nine months, but, but Monica, she's, she's experienced, she's, she's, she'll do a good job, I hope. I read the Bible every day. I go to church every Sunday and I also go to weekly Bible study and I help out with the homeless shelter every Monday morning. I'm a nerd for Jesus. Always have been and always will be. And today I helped a couple have a kid and there's a pregnant underage girl in the other room. Moral dilemma? <laughs> you think. But my mother raised me right. My mother was a maternity nurse, and so was my grandmother. She would always tell me nurses were some of God's angels sent on earth. I remember growing up as a kid, and she would tell me stories, and I loved that. It was an easy decision for me to become a nurse because I saw my mother's and grandmother's levels of kindness and generosity, and it only made it easier for me to want to become a nurse. They always focus on possibilities and not problems. And I'm trying real hard to be like them because it just feels easier. God taught us to love. So how are you feeling now? Oh, uh, uh, fine. Just a little uncomfortable, I guess. Do you need a pillow or some food, you know, hungry water, some ice chips? I mean, not, I can't get it for you course but like I can give a holler to the nurses if you need me to or anything like that you know I'm okay thank you oh okay so what does it feel like C can you describe it um what to be pregnant or the contractions oh both Tell me about both of them. Oh, uh, I guess for starters, it just, it just hurts a lot. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I, I totally wish that I could just take all of that pain away from you. Like in an instant, really. Yep, me too. Okay, so, you know, the other day I, I got to thinking. I would, would, would really like to, um, you know, be in the delivery room when you get, give birth to her. I mean, like, I, I, can't, I can't be there physically. I, I know that. But the, the nurses said that if you gave them consent or something like that, like, I could just watch here for my little G-Wagon, you know, beat, beat when she's born. <laughs> If that's all right with you, though, I mean, it's totally um, your decision, no pressure. Well, I just, I, I don't really like. No, I, I know you probably think I'm being totally demanding, and and I get it, like I get it, but I, I mean, I, I just I say it because I really feel like it'll make me feel like I'm part of it all, you know, like I mean. I just played such a big part in her life already. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I deserve it, but like, it'll. Ju I just really feel like I, I brought this baby into this world, you know? Like, even if I'm just sitting in my car. 
but it's totally your decision like no pressure you can like it's up to you you don't you don't have to um well you know what why not yes you said yes <laughs> okay so now that we're on the subject of babies right i was thinking of some names for her so i like the name taylor and I also like the name Skylar because they're both kind of gender neutral, you know. But I also just really love the name Naomi. Naomi, right? Okay, it was my grandmother's name. Something about it's just so, like, strong and direct. But, like, it's also, you know, a little old-fashioned. Just, like, my Grammy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was kind of thinking of the name, like, Savannah. I always really liked that name. When I was a kid, but you know, if you don't like it. Um... Oh, oh, that's that's not the issue at all. Uh, Savannah's a it's a it's a pretty name. I just like Naomi just a teensy wincy bit more, but we can go with Savannah. <laughs> Savannah's a pretty name, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was also thinking of the name Rose. I don't know, like Savannah Rose or whatever. Oh, it's starting. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. my gosh. Take deep breaths with me. Okay. Uh. Is it like on a scale of one to ten? Uh. When you say ten. Uh. No, no, it's okay. Just take breath. Just 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 take deep breaths with me, okay? Uh. Uh. Should totally have switched spot there, really. Deep breath. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, okay. Oh. This girl is giving me trouble already. Oh, God. I bet that's just the spirit of someone named Naomi. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Crack myself up. I'm done. Okay, but I, I am going to let my sister know that we're getting close. So I'll call her, click back, whatever you call it, when I'm done, okay? I'm uh-huh. Done. Yeah. Which one's the leave button? Is that the, is that the green? Oh, I think I, I think found it's it. On the, I think I, I, think I yeah. found it. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. We got this. Knock, knock. Uh, hey. Hey, how are you ladies doing? Uh, well, we're okay. Well, that's great to hear. Hi, my name is Ariel. I'm the hospital administrator. Um, not, not that you need to know that, but I mean, you should know that. Um, anyways, my job here is to make sure that your stay is as wonderful and as easy as it possibly can go. So, yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. Sorry. It's just. So I'm gonna need you to fill out these. Uh, uh, just so you can explain how your stay at the hospital. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh. Hey Angela, I saw that you were having a contract. Uh, oh, uh, hey Ariel, what are you doing here? Ken, oh my god, I'm actually here uh, to have Angelina, Angelina, fill out the forms for the hospital, you know? Well, she's in the middle of having a contraction. So, I'll give those to you later. <laughs> oh my god, you are so. I am. So, I'm gonna just take you. Just. You don't have to fill them out right now. I mean. <sighs> Anyways, um, so I'm gonna go. Do you guys need anything? Pen, do you need, like, ice chips, water, Angelina? No. No? <laughs> okay, so good luck with your bait. Your contra. <laughs> Just yeah, thanks. <sighs> hey, hey there, uh, how are you? I brought you some ice chips, water, juice, and snacks for guests, but it doesn't look like there are any guests. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, the ice chips are a real favorite and can help with the sick feeling. Uh... Okay, well, I haven't really got sick per se. Like, I got car sick a couple times, but I never actually threw up. Um, 
It's kind of sweet though, like, we were always in this together. My baby has always been kind to me, you know? Yeah, that's, that's really cute. Actually, I think I will take some ice chips. Awesome, uh, here you go. Thanks. Mm. This is the only thing I've eaten in a while. Also, um, there's a lady downstairs. She's gonna take my baby after it's over with. Oh. Um. Yeah, she's gonna adopt her because I'm not really old enough, you know. Yeah, well. I think you could figure it out. Oh. Uh, can I tell you a, a secret? Of course you can. I can't. Okay, well, I want to keep her. Oh, you can always hold her after. No, I mean... I want to keep my baby and not give her to anyone. Well, I mean, what about the lady in the car? Well, what about her? Doesn't she think that this is going to be her baby? She's my baby. I can do whatever I want. Okay, I mean, well, uh... Maybe you should be having this conversation with her. No, we never signed anything. I mean, we agreed that she can have it, and that was that, but... No, I just... I don't want to. Okay, well, maybe you're feeling this way now, and you'll just... You'll think differently when no! the baby... No! No, I won't. I won't. I've thought about this for a while now. I'm sure. Well, uh, I have to make my other rounds now, uh. Wait! Don't tell anyone. This, this is between you and me. I don't want anyone to know yet, got it? G got it. Uh, I, I won't, uh. I won't. Oh, Joanne, can you double check the bear? Make sure it's hypoallergenic, please. Well, what if she's allergic? Yeah, no, it's fine. Just just please go get me the hypoallergenic one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. These secretaries lose the attitude, am I right? Jeez, Louise. But I have the baby's room already. Well, almost. I bought two showers, actually. One for my family and friends, and one for my work and baby. But I have everything. Everything. Washcloths, um, swaddles. I bought a year's supply of onesies, baby wipes. Heck, I even had to buy the diaper genie. All of the girls in my Pilates class were just nagging me and riding my tail about getting this diaper genie, especially that old Barb who works at the front desk. And every morning I'd walk in, she'd go, Ah, Monica! Good morning. Have you bought the diaper genie yet? Have you bought the diaper genie yet? Have you bought... The and I just... I said, what the hell? And I just bought three of them. But <laughs> all that baby shopping and baby talk, it just really gets me thinking about my, my husband, Tom. We always wanted a family, but what can you do? He passed away... Um, Three years ago, this Thanksgiving, actually. I mean, he had a heart. Sorry, I really don't want to get emotional right now. But he had a heart. He had a heart attack. He had a... Right in our bedroom. I'm so sorry. He was just so young. He was so young. 
just a couple years older than me, really. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But he was overweight. And I just, I think that was really the worst Thanksgiving ever. After a while, I just felt like I was drifting through life completely. I mean, nothing was real to me and I just couldn't tell the difference anymore. Not to mention, I couldn't even properly date after he passed. I'd go out with these guys and it was fine until I just, I began to feel wrong, you know? And, and they'd kiss me and I just thought back to his huge cold body just, just lying there in our bed. Till I called 911, of course. Oh my gosh. I just, I really, I just didn't even bother after, after trying for so long, really. But I, I managed to get a broker's license and I just worked. I mean, I, I didn't know what else to do. But I look back on it and I, I guess I, I buried my head in all of this work to just avoid and get away from how lonely and empty I was, I was really feeling. But I mean, I, I started my own real estate business, right? And within a year, get this, I had opened a second location with the full team at both of them. <laughs> Success never tasted more great. And part of my team was my lovely receptionist, Angelina, super sweet girl. But I mean, one time I caught her crying in the conference room and that's when she told me. I mean, she looked terrified. The most petrified look was on this girl's face. But I reassured her and I told her, babe, we're going, we're gonna get through this together. We are now in this together. So, you know, I just was sitting there and I felt like when she told me, it just snapped me out of this dream I had really been living in this whole time. And call me crazy, but I heard this familiar voice from a distance. And it called to me, and it was like, Monica, adopt it, adopt it. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, maybe I should adopt it, and I could love it, and take care of it, and this could be my miracle. Oh my gosh. But I mean, I, I don't really believe in miracles, of course, but I, I certainly believe in a teenage girl not being able to raise a baby with the care that a baby needs. I mean, especially, especially not the way I can. So we made the agreement that I would take care of both of them while she was pregnant. And she even moved in with me. Helped me get the baby's room already. But on legal terms, we never filled out any paperwork. Now, I mean, I just, I didn't want to pressure the girl. There's a lot, she's already a teenager and all these emotions and hormones from pregnancy, you know. I just didn't want to cause her any ill feeling. I have been told that the biological mother can change her mind up until the time that the baby's born, but I know Angelina, I, I trust her and she wouldn't do such a thing. But <laughs> that was so, it was the most priceless reaction. You see the scene, the look on her face when we found out it was a girl. Right afterwards, she told me she wanted the baby's room all pink. So that's what we did for now. Sometimes I just tend to think it looks like a bottle of Pepto-Bismol just came in, just yapped all over the place. Really, it looks disgusting. But don't worry, it's perfectly accessorized. I accessorized it. You know, I put her snacks and sippy cups and pacifiers in like the bins and, and then I organized her scrunchies and hair ties and headbands in another. And then not to mention, I had to put her dresses, rompers and skirts in their own little armoire outside my walk-in closet because it just, it wouldn't be fair, you know? <sighs> I, I just know I'm going to love this baby more than, I mean, anyone, anyone else ever could. And that's why I just feel like I, I really need to be in that delivery room. Correction. I will be in that delivery room. <laughs> I'm not taking no for an answer. <laughs> I, I, I just, I need to be the first thing that that baby sees. I'm sorry. I just I really start to feel like a mother in times like these, you know? I just, I feel like I'm, like I'm her mother. Oh my gosh, wait.
I am her mother. Ah, I'm her mom. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. I just, I really wish Tom could see the baby's room. I mean, he'd love it. The magenta, you know, Pepto, he, he liked, <laughs> whatever. But <laughs> I just, I think he would have been a great dad, you know? And it's not just because I miss him so much. Joanne. Yeah, where's the bear? And why the hell is it pink? I told you to get the white one that was hypoallergenic. Do you not see that room full of Pepto-Bismol? It looks like there's enough pink in there. Yeah, there's enough pink in there. Get out of my face. Okay. So, when my shift starts, I have to load up a bunch of cards with juice, water, crackers, granola bars, and fruit. A little secret? I put one of each in my bag. Shh, 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 shh. Every shift, I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm so bad, but they don't pay me, so I figured that I could at least have a snack on my break or on my way home, you see. I take the bus here because I'm Lancaster. It takes about two hours to get here. And two hours to get home, and I volunteer three days a week. That's like 12 hours, man. But I needed the hours for school, so <sighs> finding positions available is really tough. So this is what I do organize juice boxes. But you know, there's a really special part of being a volunteer, and it's not just the long bus rides, the trash, the crackers. You get to see the nurses behind the scenes, you know. Also, when the mothers are discharged, the hospital has a policy that no mother walks out of the hospital. They have to be escorted out in a wheelchair. And we get to do that. It's, it's such a personal experience, you know. Walking new families down the hall, to the left, to the elevator, through the lobby, down the hall, through the other lobby. Through the lobby next to that. Finally out to the parking lot and to their car. And some are really excited. And some are really overwhelmed. But I get to be with them and see this, this really important first step for them. This, this new chapter. But the hard part is that we still have to do that job. Even if they lose the baby. And those aren't my kind of walk. Those are silent and awkward walks, not my kind of awkward work. I just get up and leave every time a pregnant lady starts screaming at me. I'm talking about like really awkward. And when I started going to school for nursing, they definitely left that part out. But hey, I guess that's that's how life works, right? There's no manuals, just steps and chapters. Hola, hi. Hi. Uh, hola. I made tacos and I left them in the kitchen. Oh, hell yeah. I haven't had tacos in so, so long. I think I'll save it for my break, which will be, uh, oh, nunca, right? Yeah. Oh, are you working a double? Yes, and I'm so excited. Do you need anything? You know, it'd be nice, a new job. <laughs> I'm I'm kidding, of course. Um, it's just one of those days. Yeah. Any new little dead new that? Sí, sí. Tienen el bebé que se llama Kai y ya está él con los otros bebés en el nursery. Whoa, 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 whoa. In English, please. Oh, my bad. I was just, you know, telling her about the couple who had a C-section, and then they put the baby in the nursery along with the other ones. The baby's name is Kai. Ah, uh, right. Very gender neutral. And about our underage arrival? Ay Dios, that's all we had in Mexico. What? The gender neutral babies? 
No, no. Where I worked before was a clinic for underage girls only. That's why I transferred here for six months. I wanted to learn how to take care of babies after delivery. We did prenatal care up until the delivery. I will never get to see the babies or the mothers again after. They go to the hospital to have it. So why did you come here? I came here because American medicine is way better than where I'm from. Also, I want to see post-delivery so I can open up my own clinic. Oh, hi nurses. Uh, sorry to bother you. Are those tacos in the kitchen? See, si, one is spoil and the other is carnitas. Uh, any vegetarian? No way. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> What's your name? We haven't met before. Oh, uh, Ramon, nice to meet you. Uh, habla espanol? Si. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, I'm from El Paso, Texas, but my parents are from El Salvador. Why haven't I seen you here before? I usually work the day volunteer shift. It's cause I go to night school. Oh, uh, what are you studying? Nursing. <laughs> I may have a job just for you. Ever been to Tulum? Uh, no, I've never been on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Well, the fact that Ramon's never been on a plane. Okay, it's not that great. Travel is pretty overrated. You know, it's one time I was on my way to Toronto and I was trying to use the no, bathroom. No, sweetie, you've never flown first class before? One time, like, on my way to Barcelona, I got bumped up to first class. They had champagne and mini hot towels. I could just lie on my back with my feet up. And like, did I mention the champagne? Anyways, gotta go see my babies. It was nice to meet you, Ramon. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Adios. <laughs> Bye, Lou. Okay, I'm gonna go check in on room three. She's getting really close. Uh, wait, um, um, where did she say I could find her? Oh, she works in the nursery. You know, going back to what I was saying, right? Toronto, the, the bathroom. So I was on my way over there, and this big okay, guy uh, was just back in the aisle. Can I tell you something? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I wasn't going to finish my story. The girl in room three told me a secret. Oh. Uh, do you want to go close the door? Yeah, actually, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, what's up? I think she wants to keep her baby. Oh. Uh... Did she tell you that? Well, she kind of told me that. Well, what did she say? Well, she said, I want to keep the baby. Well, that sounds like she's going to keep the baby. Yeah, but what about the other lady? The one who's going to adopt it? That's not our problem. Not her problem. That's that's not her problem. That's just not our problem. What do you mean that is not our problem? If the mom wants to keep her baby and she has to give her away, that's not our problem. If she wants the baby, but the lady doesn't care, you don't care. Nobody cares because that's not our problem. So it doesn't matter if the baby gets treated for right, right? That's what you're telling me. That's what you say that it doesn't matter who the baby goes to. If the mom wants the baby, then it's her baby then she doesn't have to give it to anybody else. Look, man, our job is to deliver the baby. Everyone in this hospital has a role and that's ours. What happens after the baby leaves is not our concern. It just seems so harsh is what I'm saying. If the mom wants her baby, she should be able to keep her baby. You want to be a nurse? I don't know. That's not the answer I'm looking for. You want to be a nurse? Look, is you trying to be a nurse or not? Yes, I'm trying to be a nurse. 
Exactly. So listen up. You got to be able to put aside your personal feelings, your personal thoughts, and your personal life and do your job. That's to deliver a baby, not to deliver the baby to a home. So that's it. Yep. That's it. Oh, it looks like we're about ready to go do our job. Oh my gosh, stop whatever you're doing. My baby's coming. <sighs> I've been timing Angelina's contractions and they're approximately 30 seconds apart. I learned that at the mod class. Yeah. Chop, um, chop. She's yeah, about I'll, to burst. I'll send Laura in right now. Go ahead and get those scrubs on. I'm going to call the doctor and we'll be in there in just a sec. Yes, room seven is complete. She went from a four to a nine in 45 minutes. I need an ETA on you. Oh, okay. Copy that. Wait, uh, is there anything I can do? Oh, dang. Jan went home. Chloe's probably drunk as hell. Yeah, you know what? You can scrub up. I'm going to need all the hands I can get in that room. I hope you're ready, because we're about to go deliver a baby. Or something. I was, I was born ready. This, this is my moment. This, this is my moment to shine. No more juice boxes, no snacks, no waters, no ice chips. This is my moment. Scrub up. Ramon L., the scrub, the intern, the volunteer. Yes! I'm finally gonna get to deliver a baby. Yes! Oh, wait. Uh. Where are the scrubs? Angel Cleaner, I need you to lift this leg up on the count of three. I don't wanna do this. It's alright, Katie. I'm here, okay? And we're in this together. Deep breath with me. <laughs> We're going to move this leg up and over on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. Hands, Luna, how are we doing? Terrible. Okay, so before we start, we need to talk real quick. You're going into labor right here, right now. <laughs> right, but where's the doctor? That, that's the thing. The doctor isn't going to be here. <laughs> what? She isn't having my baby without a doctor present. Are you insane? You're telling me that in all of these hospital buildings, you don't have a single doctor that could take my um, baby out of her? Um, Monica. Pen? Yeah, you know what? I, I thought I recognized you, and I've had Monica. it all day with you. Idiots could fly. I swear this place would be the airport. Oh, Monica. How dare you even... Listen to me. You too, Angelina. This is the maternity ward, and sometimes the doctors are not available. Currently, the doctor is on another call, and your labor increased dramatically faster than we expected. Look, I'm the charge nurse here, and I've done this... Thousands of times, without any doctor. Seriously? Yes, seriously. So everyone in this room is gonna help me and we're going to deliver a beautiful baby. Got it? Wait a minute. Who are you? Oh, uh, I'm Ramon. Uh, I bring the juice. <laughs> okay. Take a deep breath for me, Angelina. Laura's going to get a pit ready for us. Ramon, get a wet towel and put it behind her neck. Uh, here you go. Church key. You ready, Angelina? Not really, but let's just do it. There you go. That's the spirit. On the count of three, you're going to push really hard, and we're all going to yell, let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Let's, let's do, do it. it. was amazing yeah it was that was a textbook delivery no 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 i mean that was amazing i i can't believe the baby just came out that way 
<laughs> you did great, Ben. You really are the best. Yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> um, what was? Oh, oh yeah, uh, the baby's in the nursery, right? Well, of course. After some family time, we actually recommended that they both try to sleep, and well, they didn't hesitate on that offer. All right, great. I mean, did you see how the baby just slid out and into Penn's hands after that last push? Well, yes, Ramon. I was there. I mean, all that blood and stuff. It was so gross. Well, that's what it looks like. In fact, that was less fluid than normal. That's because she's young. We have low complications with young mothers. I mean, when you yelled, push, and it all just happened. Push. <laughs> Push! Push! Are you okay, Ramon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm fine. I, I just can't breathe. My, my heart, it's, it's starting to hurt. I'll take him outside and get him some fresh air. Oh, yeah, but, but he's really freaking out. <laughs> Uh, you can't laugh. I remember your first birth. He's actually taking it better than you did. No way. I was a total pro. I've never heard of a pro who faints. Um, first of all, I slip. And then go right back up. The first time someone sees placenta, it's really shocking. Oh. oh. Okay. Take him outside. He'll be fine. Okay. Hello? Danielle? You know it's the middle of the night, right? You had me worried. Hold on. You're where? What do you mean you're here? Wait, so where's... Where is he? Oh, my God. You know what? Yo, you sound insane. What do you mean you brought my stuff here? All of it? Okay. You cannot be doing that. Put my clothes back. Put my shoes back, and those Pokemon cards better be in a case. Man, you know what? You sound really crazy right now. You better go home, right? Hello? Hello? Damn. Great. Okay. Um, let's see who's who can cover. Oh, Luciana. Luciana. Okay. Hey, what's up? Okay. Um, can you do me a favor, like? Real quick, it'll be super quick. I'll be gone for like yeah. only a minute. Um, I just yeah. gotta go downstairs, uh, mm -hmm. grab uh, some stuff, especially those yeah. Pokeball. Okay, yeah, them yeah. Love. Okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so just if anyone's here, just okay, make sure I've covered they get the people with... before you can go. No, I know, but like if anyone comes, if they need like juice, water, mm -hmm. um, uh, the forms, especially those forms. Come on, um, just. Make sure yeah. they get them, all right? Uh, yeah. I'll be right back. Um, my wife mm -hmm. is here. Uh, she brought all okay, my you stuff. Know what? You, you, you can go. Okay. Um, just, just help anyone. Uh...
didn't see him. I didn't hear him. My back was turned. I was changing the twins and I, I turned around and he was just there. He had a baby in his arms and the blanket was falling off of her and I screamed. He put the baby back in her bassinet and I ran towards him and he pushed me back. I ran towards him again and he smacked my face. Nobody was around. I couldn't stop him. But I remember his smell. That's my only job and I can't even do my job. I just don't want to be here anymore. The only thing I see is the blanket falling from that baby. And I love working with babies. All you have to do is hold them and take care of them and love them. And I, I couldn't. I couldn't stop him. He was too fast. He was too... I don't know. I don't know where she is. She's alone with no one to feed her. No one to take care of her. And that was supposed to be me. What am I going to do with her to that baby? I still see her moving her tiny hands. Opening her eyes every time I went to see her. I gotta get back to the other babies. They need me. And I guess I need them. I look at her and she has the oldest soul I've ever seen. It almost scares me how deep she looks into my eyes. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. You know? And I... I will do anything. Anything. <laughs> Literally anything. <laughs> to... To protect her, you know? She's my baby. <laughs> I, I wanted a water birth at home, uh, but Eric would not let me. Uh, he said he would kill himself if <laughs> if anything happened or anything went wrong, he wouldn't forgive himself. And anyway, I finally agreed. And um, I mean, I'm so glad, you know, uh, I'm so happy that we decided to, to do it this way, you know. <laughs> If you're gonna get a C-section, I highly recommend Dr. Nola. She's amazing, so talented. Interesting choice of music, but it distracted us, so. Anyway, none of that matters. She's here, you know? Yeah, when we, um, when we found out I was pregnant again, I, uh, 
I was terrified. Because you see, I, I'd, I'd been pregnant before. Um, I was almost five months along. When I, I, uh, I had a miscarriage. To date, it was the most devastating thing I had ever been through, you know, in, in my life. I just... I didn't really think I would get over it, you know? But then um, Eric convinced me to try again, and I didn't think I could... I could do it, you know, I could, I could go through it again. But that first try, I got pregnant with Kai. Right when I found out, I created a regimen, I created a birth plan, what to eat, when to eat, when to sleep. I went to birth classes, I got a doula. I, you know, I I did everything I could. And um, my doctor kept telling me, you know, everything's normal and the, the baby's healthy and, you know. But I, um, I couldn't, I couldn't seem to connect with being pregnant. I think um, until I passed the six month mark, I just, I couldn't. Um, <laughs> I remember the first time I felt her, her first kick. <laughs> I was so anxious. I <laughs> got a holding her now. So, so calm for the first time in months because when I first saw her it was the definition of of at first sight in that moment all the preparations and and plans. <laughs> they didn't matter, you know? Because we had Kai. <laughs> you know, um, there's a name for the baby you have after a miscarriage. It's called a rainbow baby. <laughs> She's a rainbow baby. Each of the babies wear this little monitor around their ankles so that if they're ever removed from the nursery by someone who shouldn't be handling them, the alarm goes off. Think of it like baby house arrest. Even if the baby gets too close to the elevators with their own parents, we can get a false alarm. When that happens, we're quickly notified and then we can turn off the alarm. In all my years working here, we had never had a real abduction happen. Guess what? First one. My fault. I should have been fired. But, because of surveillance and how fast it all happened, I never even made it downstairs to get my Pokeball. I mean, deal with Danielle. <laughs> Luciana just told him I went to the bathroom. I'm gonna have to live with this one. 
But honestly, I can't even be mad at the kid. It was the father of the underage girl who did it. He was able to make it into the hospital, past our so-called security, and then out with the newborn. He didn't get far though. He actually came back an hour or so later. It was stupid. He came in violently and took a baby from a hospital. But he is the dad, young or not. He just wanted to see his daughter. He fought for her. Hell, I'd fight for my kid too if I wasn't already with him. Either way, I let my guard down today. And sweet Lou got hurt. <sighs> I'm not sure what's going to happen to her. To be honest, I'm not even sure what the mom, maybe the adoptive mom is going to do. But that's not my job. My job is to deliver babies. I'm pretty good at my job. I'm also human. But you know what? At least we got the baby back. Hello? Is anyone there? Of course they're there. Just, just wait. Oh, uh, yeah, we are here. Oh, well, I am here. Hi. Uh, hi. You guys must be the Rexes. Yes, yes, yeah. we are. Okay, cool. And you guys are here for the scheduled induction? Yes, we sir. Are. Oh, I heard a sir. Who said that? Me. me. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. Well, uh, cool. Thanks for choosing this hospital. Uh, you know, we got a great doctor to deliver your baby. Um, we got great staff. We got a guy with juice. We had an abduction earlier this year. I mean, yeah, we did, but it's, it's cool. It's cool. We have someone to escort you to your room now. Nothing bad's going to happen. Um, but first, you need to fill out the forms. So uh, we're going to have you sign them here. Then the escort will come, and we'll send you to your room because we wouldn't want you to get lost either. You know, there's a big hospital. But what about you, miss? Do you need anything? Like water, juice? Water. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Quick question. Am I allowed to stay with her during all this? Yeah, of course, man. Oh. You're the dad. Um, but here's the thing. If you leave the room, you're not going to be allowed back in. Or actually, oh. if you leave the hospital, you're not going to be allowed back in. What? That That's... I'm the dad. I should be allowed back in. What... When, when does that start? When, how much time do I have? It actually started when you appeared on my screen. So, uh, just like deal with it. So He'll be fine. I, I left my phone in the car. Your phone? <laughs> really? Oh my gosh, you're impossible. Well, all right. Well, my name is Penn. I'm the charge nurse here. I'll be taking care of you guys. So, let's go have this baby. <laughs> 